All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up today. We're going to be in Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 5 through 9. Uh, great books of the Bible. If you're looking for some books to kind of chew on and dive into, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, General Electric Power Company. You can always remember that. And uh, Galatians is, is one of the best books in the Bible. Uh, it's kind of like Romans, just uh, the Cliff Notes version. A little, little smaller, a little bit more uh, digestible, great book of the Bible. But here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 5 through 9, we're going to answer the question of, is the gospel a New Testament thing? Right? Is the gospel a New Testament thing? Is, is, okay, the Old Testament is the law. You went to heaven by being a Jew. And now the New Testament is Jesus, and you go to heaven by going to church and being a Christian. Is that what the Bible teaches? Um, we'll see today that the gospel is not a New Testament thing. And, and I hope you're catching how important the foundation of the gospel is for your Christian life. I hope you're understanding, oh, this is what the gospel is. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose from the dead, signifying, showing us that God the Father accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for your and my sins. Now, is the gospel a New Testament thing? We're going to pick it up, Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. It says, therefore, he who supplies the Spirit, which is the Lord, he supplies us with the Holy Spirit. If you're going to live this Christian life successfully, if you're going to overcome sin, temptation, if you're going to make it through trials, if marriage is going to make sense, if parenting is going to work, if you're going to be able to serve God in ministry and continue to grow in the plans that he has for us, for you, you're going to need the supply of the Holy Spirit daily, if not moment by moment, and I might even say second by second. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So Paul now is saying by the Spirit, listen, does the Spirit of God, is he supplied to you by you doing good things? Does God look at you and have like a checklist and go, oh, went to church this week. Oh, went to, uh, read the Bible. Oh, got to work on time. Oh, you know, at the end of the week, he goes, I got a surprise for you. You now get a little of the Spirit. Just a little, just taste a little. No, of course not. Paul says, you weren't saved that way, and you don't receive the Holy Spirit that way. You don't receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law, but by the hearing of faith, verse 6, just as Abraham. Now, is Abraham in the New Testament or the Old Testament? Father Abraham, right? He's the patriarchs, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is, Jehovah God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abram was, is the father of the Jewish nation. God says, look at the stars of the sky, you're Descendants will be more than them. His name was Abram. God will change his name to Abraham. Sarai, he'll change his name to Sarah. God will add, add the, what's it, the fifth letter of the, the Hebrew alphabet uh, to their life. Grace. It's a, it's a number of grace. Just as Abraham, listen, pay attention, underline this. He believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. This is the Old Testament, folks. This is the Old Testament. This is all the way back in the book of Genesis. It's amazing to me. Genesis 15, verse 6. And God tells him here, Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him as righteousness. God gave Abraham a promise in his salvation. The, the righteousness was imputed to Abraham's account. It was accounted to him, meaning God took the righteousness from his account and put it in Abraham's account, not because of the works of the law, but because when God made Abraham a promise, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. This is how we receive the gospel. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Now, this is a powerful statement. Here, the Spirit of God is saying in the book of Galatians that it's not those that are ethnically Jewish that are the sons of Abraham. He's saying it's those who believe God. You know, um, Jesus says to the Jews in his day, he says, you know, if you really believed Moses, you would believe in me because he talked about my day. If you were really sons of Abraham, you would believe me. And Jesus tells him, listen, God is able today to raise up sons of Abraham from these rocks. He's talking about the Gentiles. 
you know, he's talking about the Gentile believers, the countless, like you and me, non-Jews that would believe in the Jewish Messiah for salvation, the church. Therefore, know that only those who are faith of the sons of Abraham and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach, note this, the gospel to Abraham. Does, is the gospel a New Testament thing? No. This was the gospel back then. That God's telling them in the book of Genesis chapter 3, and that's not the New Testament, God says to the serpent, listen, that the, the seed of this woman, not the seed of man, you know, Jesus was not born of the seed of man. Joseph was not Jesus's biological father, maybe his adopted father, but not his biological father. It, it was a virgin birth. You know, he came from the seed of, of the woman here. And what we see happen is Jesus says, he, you will bruise his heel, Lucifer. You'll bruise his heel, Satan, same person. On the cross, his heel was bruised. The spike went through his, his wrists and his feet. But he will crush your skull. Jesus will crush Satan. He'll crush sin. He'll crush hell. He'll crush death. He'll accomplish salvation for all who believe. This is Genesis. Then you move on to Abraham. The gospel, the Bible says, was preached to Abraham. Old Testament saints were not saved by keeping the law. Old Testament saints were saved by believing in the coming Messiah, that the coming Messiah was on his way and he would forgive them of their sins. He would deal with all the problems. By faith, it was accounted to him as righteousness. And I love that. Preach the gospel to Abraham before and saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Listen, you and I, need to trust the Lord. We need to believe God. You know, you go, all right, pastor, I've believed in Jesus. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead, right? And I'm a Christian. I've been baptized, but I'm struggling. I just can't seem to, 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 to take five steps without, you know, tripping up and falling in the ditch and, you know, going, you know, like a dog returns to his vomit. I'm returning to my folly. What, what am I to do? This is going to be hard to hear, but this is what you need to do. You need to believe God. You need to believe him. John the Apostle says, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. You know, do you believe Jesus on the cross, he, he paid for all your sins? You know, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus come, he says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You know, rather than focusing so much in on your sins, how about you focus on just staying with the center of the gospel? His name is Jesus. It's not religion. It's Jesus walking with him, getting close to him, you know, growing in him, believing him. That's how faith is demonstrated. If you really believe God, right, it's not faith plus works. It's faith that works. Real faith shows itself by works, by clinging to Jesus. But it's not works that lead to faith. It's faith. It's believing him, believing Jesus. Abraham believed in the Lord. It was accounted to him as righteousness. I encourage you, believe God today. Whatever he's calling you to, believe him. It's him. It's him. Stop worrying about all this stuff. Just get to Jesus. Get to him. Let him work out the rest. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. All these things will be added. But you got to seek him and stick with him. Walk with him. That's what he wants. Father, we praise you, Lord, for the gospel. We thank you that it was preached in the Old Testament. And that we get to be the recipients of it now. In these days, right before you return. So fill us with your spirit. And Lord, help us to believe you today by faith in Jesus' name. Amen.